Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Friday, September 27th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Michigan State game in one day. The game against Michigan in 64 days. Buckeyes are headed up north a little later on today. And guess what? So are we. Tony, Kevin, and I making the trip up to Michigan. We will be up there later tonight when the Buckeyes get into the East Lansing area. We'll have, hopefully, live ar- a coverage of the our team's arrival. Maybe a quick interview with Ryan Day when he gets to the team hotel. And all that good stuff. All the stuff you've come to know and expect on Buckeye Road Game Weekends, all at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. And of course, BuckeyeHuddle.com. Just a little little later on today, we'll have full coverage all weekend long from East Lansing. So you have that to look forward to. Here's something else you have to look forward to. Chance to hear directly from Ryan Day and some of the Buckeye players who you don't necessarily get to hear from as much. Can I sort of spread things out a little, a little bit? Got a lot of sound bites for you today from our interviews earlier this week. A lot of interesting sound bites from different guys. And I always like to let you hear from different folks who maybe you haven't seen or heard outside of their football helmets in uh, the recent past. Kind of let you get to know the players a little bit better. But we're going to start with Ryan Day. You hear plenty from him all the time. One of the things he let us know this week right, is was that Tyler Williams practiced on Wednesday. He, quote, had a good day. We will see how that translates to Tyler Williams' availability for Saturday. But he had a good day in practice on Wednesday. So that's a positive development for the Buckeyes. Another positive development. They still have Jeremiah Smith on the team. That is a very positive development for the Ohio State football program in 2024. When you look at someone like Jeremiah, who steps in and just day one, just boom, starter, immediate impact player for the Buckeyes, is there something that Ryan Day sees that lets him know that a freshman can handle a big workload early? I think the first thing is that they get here at mid-year. It's been really hard for guys to make an impact who aren't here in January. It's just the truth in their freshman year. Um, I think the second thing is, you know, they're, they're physically mature and then they're, they're mentally and emotionally mature to be able to handle uh, and quickly can assimilate into just the, um, you know, the the speed of the game. Um, every play, you got to bring it. You know, sometimes in high school, you can get away and coast a little bit and take some plays off. You can't do that in, in college. You certainly can't do that here. So... Um, you know, those are the things we look for. Consistency, being able to push through physically, mentally, emotionally. And, you know, usually those are the guys that make an impact. The Buckeyes were very excited to get Donovan Jackson back last weekend for the Marshall game. He sat out the first two weeks of the season and probably could have played if he needed to. But it seems like they just wanted to let him take time, let him heal. He's back. He's ready to go once again this week. What did it mean to the team to get Donovan Jackson back on the field? Yeah, uh, you know, he graded out a champion. I thought he, you know, we didn't have a whole bunch of plays in, in the game, some some explosive plays, um, some shorter drives, but I, I think there was a confidence across the board having him in there. Not that, you know, Austin didn't do a nice job when he was in there, but, you know, we're talking about one of the better players in college football, and um, I, I think that across the board, up front, the communication was much better. I thought there was some co- cohesiveness, guys finishing downfield. Um, so good to have him back in the mix. The Ohio State special teams did not have an outstanding weekend last weekend. Three straight kickoffs out of bounds. Jaden Fielding eventually got replaced by Austin Snyder on both kickoffs and placements last weekend. So what is the plan for special teams this week? Yeah, we feel like Austin can do the kickoffs. Um, I think, um, or uh, yeah, Austin can do the kickoffs. Um, whether Jaden can or not, we'll, we'll kind of see how he does towards the end of the week. Uh, I, I feel like Jaden certainly can do the, the field goals and extra points. So we'll plan on him doing that. And as we get closer, we'll, we'll decide on the kickoffs. While Donovan Jackson was early, out earlier in the season, Austin Sierveld filled in at left guard when Donovan Jackson came back. They slid Austin Sierveld over to right guard and sort of rotated him and Tegra Shibola there at that position just to kind of give both guys a chance to keep playing. Now, is that going to be the plan moving forward as well? If they both continue to play well, yes. Um, rare that that happens, but, um, you know, yeah. I mean, we're, we're going to keep letting them play and see how that shakes out right now. Um, I, I think it's a good thing. I, I remember it one year at Boston College we did this, and uh, when you had a younger guy a little bit inexperienced, you know, you were able to kind of give them a little bit of a deep breath for a series, and, and we found that to be beneficial. Um, and, you know, one of the questions is, well, do they get in the flow of the game? The one thing about having the tablets and being able to watch the last series up there, exactly what happened in terms of the blitz patterns and some of the things that are going on, I think that's helpful. So we'll keep pushing forward on it and see where it takes us. But we, we want to keep playing these guys who deserve to play. And I think both of them right now deserve to. 
earlier this week, Will Howard talked about the fact that he was excited to maybe get a little, get to run the ball a little bit more going into Big Ten season. So what's the thinking that goes into that kind of a decision? Well, he knows that, that that's a huge weapon, and uh, it's a huge weapon at all levels of football. And then certainly for us, you know, we're going to need that because it, it changes the the entire um, you know, the advantage in the box, the leverage, uh, the numbers, um, and, and having you know the ability to pull the ball and read somebody certainly makes a big difference. And um, and so when appropriate, we'll use that. Um, he, he knows that. He's done that before. He feels comfortable in that. He likes that part of it. And, um, and I think it just adds to his overall game. The last time the Ohio State Buckeyes were up in East Lansing back in 2022, it was the middle of the Mel Tucker era. Mel Tucker, there was a lot of hype and a lot of excitement. And, oh, boy, Mel Tucker was going to change things around East Lansing. And, well, two years later, uh, things have changed around East Lansing. There is a whole new coaching staff there. So how has Michigan State changed? from last year to this year with that whole new coaching staff, change what they're doing. You're also going to hear kind of a quick clarifying question in the middle of the sound bite from Tim May. Um, a different style of defense, um, you know, different coordinator, different, um, some of the same players, but also some new guys. And um, I think they changed a little bit more on offense, just, you know, um, more of what they did at Oregon State, huddling, you know, a little bit more under center, um, some more 12 personnel where, uh, they were a little bit more spread out, shotgun, uh, no huddle in the past. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Does it make this more like getting ready for a team? You haven't played in a while. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, explain that. Well, when you, yeah, when you have when yeah, yeah, when, when when there's a new coach at one of the conference schools, you know, there, there's a change there. So uh, there's a little bit of an unknown just because you know you haven't had multiple years going against them before. Um, we know a little bit more about their personnel, but not exactly about their schemes and some of their stuff, some of the stuff that they do. So, um, you, you know, you got to do a good job being ready for, you know, the unexpected and uh, have a good plan. But um, but to me, it, ultimately, it's going to come down to handling uh, the road, handling the noise, um, you know, being really good with the football, running the football, stopping the run. Now on to a guy who you have seen and heard a bunch about this year, but have not necessarily heard a lot from over the course of the year. That is Jeremiah Smith. Through freshman wide receiver already making a big impact on this year's team. What was the biggest adjustment for him to going from playing in high school and now playing in college? I say the playbook, um, just because you know we got you know different formations, um, a lot of stuff that go into it, and just coming from high school, that was one of my biggest things. I say I had problems with just you know learning the playbook a little bit, um, but Coach Hotline uh, Mecca. Cardinal, really the whole receiver group just helped me a lot and just helped me just learn the playbook and just understand it. You know, high school, I was just single-sided, one-side receiver, just tell me to play all the route and I just run it. So that's all. I think there were big expectations for Jeremiah Smith coming into the Ohio State program back in January. I think he may have exceeded most of those already, but did he expect to have this big of a role this early in his career? Uh, not at all. Not at all. Just coming in, you no, know, this Ohio State and just all the receivers that been here and I was here before I got here. So I did not have no expectation of having the role that I have right now. So, I mean, I just give all the thanks to God and just be able to be in this position right now. Now on from the freshman phenom to the crafty veteran, team captain, Block O jersey recipient, Cody Simon, respected veteran on the team. I got a chance to ask him a few questions on Wednesday. Here's one of them. When you go from three lesser non-conference opponents to now going into Big Ten play, do, does the team notice a ramp up of intensity around practice when you know it's Big Ten season? Yeah, I mean, there's always a little ramp up for Big Ten ball, but we've been we've been prepared. We've been preparing to play the best teams no matter what. Every every week it's it's a grind for us. So, you know, we're not, we're not nothing's crazy happening right now. Our goals are still the goals, and our and our, our work ethic is still the same work ethic. We're just trying to get better and, and know who our, know our opponent. There have been a bunch of Buckeyes, young Buckeyes, who have lost their black stripes very recently, the last couple weeks. What does Cody Simon remember about what it was like to lose his black stripe and what that meant to him? I mean, it, it's, it's really that, that welcome to the brotherhood, really. And, you know, it's hard to understand that until you actually you know, get there and, and, and get to that point in, in your career. Um, I remember I, I got mine off in the middle of COVID in, in a scout uniform, and it was one of the best days of my life because I felt like I, I'd earned that, that respect from my teammates and, and my coaches. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm so happy for all these young guys because uh, they're proving themselves out there every, every game and, 
you know, uh, you know, it's really it's an honor for them, and and I'm I'm happy to have those guys join our brotherhood too. One trend that I know Ohio State fans have noticed and not particularly cared for over the last few weeks is teams maybe being able to move the ball up and down the field a little bit on the first or maybe second drives of the first half or the second half. So what changes when that stops happening and how do you stop it from happening in the first place? Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all about about adjusting in, in, in the moment, really. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what first drive, second drive, we need to be able to get stops no matter what. Um, and that's our goal, really. And uh, but I think the biggest thing is be able to adjust on the fly. You know, we didn't get off the field in that first drive and, and it we let the each first down like weigh on us a little bit. So we didn't need to be able to get that first stop and get that get that get off the field really. Here's another guy who has made a big impact on the Ohio State team over the last couple of seasons, but you haven't necessarily heard a ton from. That would be left tackle Josh Simmons. So where has he improved the most over the last year? I I think I've uh I became, I improved more in like uh, recognizing defense and stuff like that. That way, if I get a run play, I can kind of, I guess, measure up how a combo is going to go, or if if uh, Deion's going to fiver, or he's, he might go inside, or he might shoot up the field. You know, recognizing blitzes and downs and distances and stuff like that, and kind of putting some puzzles together so it can help me throughout the the down. While Donovan Jackson was out the first couple of weeks, Josh Simmons worked next to Austin Sierveld instead of Donovan Jackson. So. What were his impressions of Austin Sierveld when he had to step in for Donovan Jackson? I was amazed. I mean, uh, you know, obviously Donnie is like an amazing football player, but, you know, um, Austin did not. It, it was almost like I didn't skip a beat, and that was really, really amazing because, you know, a lot of people, they get next to somebody they never played next to, and they can kind of like get all out of, out of whack, but next to Austin, it wasn't that way. Offensive line coach Justin Fry is a little bit of a lightning rod right now among Ohio State fans especially those who focus on recruiting rather than necessarily the current team or development. So Josh Simmons was asked about the impact that Justin Fry has had on his development since coming to Ohio State. A lot. So, I mean, I kind of knew Coach Fry had like a, like gifted at this type of thing because he was like really smart. He can kind of teach you a lot about offensive line and, and stuff like that. But I mean, not, I didn't think it was going to be like this when I got here. Um, I mean, so him having him having him as like a resource to come to if I'm struggling with, let's say, I had a not so good day at practice, I can come to him and he can explain to me why this happened and stuff like that. And I can just grow from him that way. Normally, we try and give you 15, 20 seconds on these sound bites so you get to hear from the guys a little bit. But this was a good answer and it was a shorter one. You're going to get this one anyway. So why is Josh Shemmons excited to go on the road this weekend? Going on the road? Absolutely. Going into somebody else's home and, you know, Taking their food is probably the best feelings you can have as a football player. So, And finally, back to the defensive side of the ball. Here's Caden Curry, defensive lineman. He is a multi-sport athlete, or at least was in high school. Ryan Day has talked about the fact that he, they like to get guys who are multi-sport athletes, guys who maybe play basketball in addition to football or ran track or, in this case, in Caden Curry's case, played, ba- played baseball in addition to playing football. So. How did that, what did that transition go like from playing baseball in high school as well as football to now just playing football? Um, I mean, the shoulder workouts are a lot different. I mean, you can actually start lifting weights. I mean, when I played baseball in high school, it was hard to lift on my left shoulder because I was a pitcher. So kind of just the way you lift. But I mean, once you get out of it, you can just kind of do all whole body and kind of just go crazy with it. So I feel like it's just kind of like with your arm a little bit more. What was there about Caden Curry's experience as a high school baseball pitcher that maybe helps him out now? Um, yeah, definitely the first thing I'd say from being a pitcher is maintaining a poker face. Not everything's going to go your way, and you can definitely show it out in the field and show your emotions and express yourself. So I mean, definitely just being able to maintain and handle the environment and the, the moment and the emotions you have. So I mean, definitely just keeping a straight face and being able to work, continue going through it. And finally, we're going to end the show talking about the same thing we mentioned right off the top, Tyleek Williams. Still not sure if Tyleek Williams is going to play this weekend or not. But here was Caden Curry's answer on the impact that Tyleek Williams has on this Ohio State defensive line and the Ohio State team. Um, I mean, you guys see it. Tyleek is a great player, obviously. He could have left last year if he wanted to, but he obviously decided to stay and kind of continue his senior year. So he's definitely a major impact player on our D-line. But, I mean, definitely we're going to have to have those backup D tackles later in the season. So, I mean, you can't just bank on Tyleek all year. So I feel like definitely giving that role to those D tackles early and often kind of just kind of puts it in perspective for him that it could happen later on and it could happen in matchup games. It could happen in big games. So kind of just letting them see that early on definitely helped too. But obviously you'd love to have Tyleek every play if you could. 
Kevin, Tony, and I will be headed up to East Lansing on Friday. We will be up there for the team's arrival. Estimated time is about 5.30 to the team hotel. We should be doing a live show at the team hotel a little before then. Maybe pencil in 5 o'clock for us. We'll sort of adjust according to the team's arrival plans and the travel plans and all that kind of stuff. Plan on seeing us around 5 o'clock on Friday night at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. We'll be live from the team hotel. Planning to have the team arrival. Get a chance to maybe talk to Ryan Day for at least a minute or two to get some quick updates on guys who made the trip and that kind of stuff. And then we'll kind of go from there. Uh, but we will have plenty of coverage live from East Lansing all weekend long. That's all going to be at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. And there's going to be plenty of content as well at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That's where Kevin, Tony, and I cover the team. Mark covers recruiting. Got our whole team of X's and O's gurus there to make you a smarter football fan. All at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We're right now running that sale. Still running that sale for a little bit while, a little while longer. Four ninety nine for your first month. Sign up today. Get access to our whole team of insiders. Great content. Really fun community and much, much more. All at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.